This is Rin Weaver, and this is Sessions with Steve Serrano. Early morning for you. We want to know, I mean, what are we drinking here? What, what do you start your morning off with? A double espresso. Okay. And we talked ahead of time, like, you were a caffeine junkie at times, though, right? Yes. I developed a slight addiction. That's and I good. love coffee houses. I love, like, I used to live out of my car okay. in Los Angeles. And um, I used to just go to coffee shops and, like, make music in there. Because yeah. otherwise, I'd free like, Wi -Fi. be, yeah, free Wi Fi, right. all of it. So I think I just have slowly developed it. But I love a double espresso. I um, My friend has one of the Nespresso things. Yeah. Where you pop the pods in. Yeah, the pods. And whenever in. I'm there, I just like use like six pods. It's bad. You pick what you want. And you just like, you get into like hyper speed. What are some big inspirations for you? Who, who are some of those people that. I want to do my own thing. I mean, that, sure, I have influences, but I have influences across the board. And it's actually hard sometimes because I feel like anytime in an interview I talk about my influences, I'm like beating myself up yeah. after because I'm like, wait, I wanted to list these people too. But I don't want to be like any of them. Who, who, I want to be the next me. The next you. Yeah, or the first me. Who did you listen to then growing up that, that gave uh, you that made you like maybe everything. even want to get into music? Yeah, my father has like a very eclectic taste, but he also like just loves that dad rock. Okay. You know, like he's a Pink Floyd guy yeah. all the way. And then I kind of found the Joni Mitchells, okay. the Tori Amoses. My dad loves Carole King. Okay. Um, you know, very much that golden era, yeah, I think, sure. of music is what I have been most influenced by. You're not one to compare yourself to another artist. No. You're you. I'm me because other people are going to make the comparisons for me as okay. they do. People love comparing female sure. artists. If I was the comparisons that have been made yeah. thus far, I would be every single female artist that is out right now. Okay. Because it's all like based on people's reference points, and I feel like people don't always have the references yeah. to be able to actually make a an educated comparison. They're like, you're like Lord meets Lana meets Florence meets Rihanna meets Beyonce. I'm like, that makes no sense. I don't even listen to other music when I'm making really? it. Really? So I you, think that's like the best way to you go. You avoid any other music? I avoid listening like to music because I'm like, my influences hopefully will stick with me. I know a lot of people write different ways. Like they'll listen to a couple songs before they sure. write a song to get going yeah. and get a vibe. But I just like sit in my room and write words and get all weird. No, I just kind of write wherever I can. A lot of the times I write walking down the street. I love walking. Okay. And I used to love walking and smoking cigarettes. Uh -huh. I recently tried to cut that out. Voice coach said no. Just Voice talking, coach said right? no. Yeah. I said no to that. Um, but yeah, no, they're just bad for you in general. But um, I love walking and writing and just humming and. Especially in New York City, if you're walking and humming, people don't think you're crazy. Yeah. Or they do, but they don't care because everyone's crazy in New York City. <laughs> so I just kind of like walk down the street and come up with ideas and do, the, do them into my voice memos on my phone. Uh, yeah. Going to school in New York, yeah. uh, were you able to, to write a lot about that experience that you had there? When I was in New York, I actually was very, I, I wrote one song and it was called Songbird okay. and it was about how I couldn't write. Okay. And it was about how I was so like stifled within myself, sure. kind of. And then I left. <laughs> I left New York City. But best yeah, decision that was ever a then for best you? decision ever. But I'm I'm now back there a lot, and okay. I think I had to I had to do a, a, a forced restart, like a troubleshoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was like, something is wrong. I am not happy. I'm not healthy. Yeah. I need to just be really irresponsible for a little while and leave school, and find myself. And I did like a soul searching up and down the coast of California, living with friends everywhere and just being like, do you mind if I crash? And then having all different sorts of boyfriends and <laughs> just living my life, yeah. So we want to hear some music. Okay. You want to head back to Studio B? Yes. Let's do this. <laughs> it's all so weird. Everything goes so quickly, so it's kind of... Finished up uh, Westport Coffee House. Yes. Back to our uh, Studio B for a little performance from you. Yeah. We're excited for this. And <laughs> you'll play your single Octahate, uh, yes. a very close song to you, though. Yes. Tell me about that. The whole song's kind of a reckoning with losing a relationship and, like, kind of being played. But it's just about, like, I guess, a really unhealthy relationship, as yeah. a lot of people have had them. And, and I wrote an album that's kind of, like, 
not a play, but like yeah. an opera. Like but it's an always, alt, it's gotta be. Like an alt popera. I wanted to do like a, like a, an album the way people used to do albums, where it's yeah. like not just attempting like a million singles. And it's kind of about like my journey and how I kind of got my groove back. How does it end? How does the album end? The album ends with me kind of getting what I want. It's from the perspective of a modern woman because I feel like there's so much music right now that's like, baby, take me back. I need yeah, you, yeah, I yeah. love you. And it's so submissive. And I, I just feel like there's not enough stuff speaking from the perspective of like an actual empowered woman, which in reality is very close to what it means to be a man as well. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I feel like so many men have fear of commitment sure. and all of these Always. things I'm talking about. And I think they like to think that women don't either, but it's 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 a very uh, ungendered experience. Experience of what it that goes makes on. Sense. So where do you see yourself in, in five years? You know, I don't care to be prolific For by sure. any means. I, I like to um, take my time and figure things out and do them right. I'm like very conceptual yeah. in my writing and I feel like I already know where I'm going with the next one. So I'm kind of just riding the wave and uh, hopefully keep building, build my live show. Because okay. I want it to be like an experience because there's such an arc to the album sure. that I really want it to be like a performance Form art performance. piece versus like just like a rock show. Like yeah. the way that old rock stars, like a Bowie, like scene, like that, that they brought this like theater to the music. music. I think there's something uh, really interesting to be said about that. So hopefully within five years, I'll be a boss as a right. performer. That's right. And I'll, I'll have another album out and maybe another. That's right. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're excited. We want to see you perform. I'm going to do it. We're going to do that right now. <laughs> if you've not downloaded it, you can download it also. Let's go inside. Let's do this. You shut me down from the lower, toss to the lost and you